Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop involves magic, and because of that, we're going to utilize my magic, and then I'll have myself explain to you how to play the game. Kill Merlin! In Kill Merlin, you're going to be playing with two to four awful wizards, and your objective is to defeat Merlin. Why? Well, Merlin's basically become this ringleader of sorts, and you wizards need to find the secret magical spell, as well as have 20 mana in order to conjure the spell to defeat him. Everybody else is trying to accomplish the same thing, and whoever can do that first is going to be the winner of the game, moving around the board with the four different types of elements. Of course, Merlin will be in the game as well, and he's going to be utilizing that with his cards here, creating his own unique turns, and whoever is able to defeat him first, obviously, will be the winner of the game. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at Kill Merlin. So here we have a mostly set up game for Kill Merlin and everything that will be included. This is of course a prototype, so changes will be made. This is the box and there's also rules as well. On the board you see the four different elements. You got wind and uh, water, uh, earth, so on and so forth. And there's six of each cards and they all have their own unique spells. Uh, there's four players in this game and they all have their own unique wizards or if you want to use tokens you could do that as well and of course your ingredients in order to make the spells on each of the spells there's ingredients to make it and then it'll cost you three to uh, learn it and then it'll cost you on the corner here the cost in order to provide the spell wizards actually have little hats so when you use a spell you're going to go take the hat off and that will conjure the spell's ability it's also going to have a merlin card dictating what player's turn merlin proceeds as well as a bunch of mana here two die, which you'll be using to gather mana, and a secret formula, which you're going to start off with at the beginning of the game to determine what cards you're going to need to get in order to win the game. Uh, after you get one of each of these specific four cards, or four different areas here, and 20 mana, you're going to win the game. The last thing you need to know about is Merlin's deck, of course, and he does certain things throughout the game after everybody takes their turn. Usually bad things, but they can be good as well. This is pretty much everything you're going to get. I'll tell you what you are going to start with after we come up and talk about how to play a turn. So after the game is set up and you receive all your starting resources and cards, you're going to begin the turn. The turns are going to begin by starting to cast a spell, but only the beginning spells. And the spells that will show beginnings are going to have this little B on them. The ones that have endings will have E. If you can cast a beginning spell, it's going to cost a certain number of mana. You're going to utilize that mana, and then you're going to do whatever it says. The first turn, you can't do that, though, because you have no mana. After that, you're going to take these die here, and you're going to roll for mana. You can get 2 mana, or you can get 12 mana. It's simply a roll of the die to see how lucky you get. Then in turn order in any order you could choose to buy ingredients off of the top of this deck here for one mana a piece up to three or two mana if you would like to buy them from the uh, spaces below this mimic here is a while you can also choose to learn spells and learning spells is pretty simple the top uh, left and right hand corner is the recipe and that you need to have the certain ingredients for it. if you spend those ingredients along with three mana you can learn that spell by placing a wizard from your pool onto that space after a certain point you're going to start be placing wizard from the board and moving them around in order to uh, acquire new spaces in the board. If they have their hats on, they'll be able to utilize the spell. Uh, then you can go ahead and cast the uh, end of turn spell, the ones that have B and E are both turns. Whenever you cast a spell as well, don't forget, these you know, your wizards have little hats on them, or if you're using a token, you flip it, but you'll take it off. That means it's been utilized, uh, but you can gain them back. Merlin is usually going to be doing something like that to help you out throughout the game sometimes. After that, if you've accomplished... Uh, every single secret formula on your board so if we look at this one here you need the top right blue one you need the middle bottom uh brown one the bottom left red and the bottom right uh silver over here if you can acquire a person or a wizard on each of those spaces along with 20 mana you will simply win and you will kill merlin uh turns gonna keep going around in circles until everybody has taken their turn in which case merlin will take his turn by drawing a card from his deck and he'll still do something like make each wizard move a wizard around the board until merlin takes his next turn any wizard who casts a beginning of turn spell can cast an end of turn spell for two less mana so on and so forth it changes it changes the turn order as well and players will go like that once somebody has acquired the resources at the end of their turn he will simply state and with that i kill merlin as smugly as he possibly can. And that is how you play the game. I'll show you down below a quick gameplay example of a turn. So we're back to kill Merlin, and I went ahead and set it up for three players. As you see, every single player is gonna get their three ingredients. They're gonna get five mana, and they're also gonna get their secret formula, which tells them where they need to have their wizards at the end of the game with 20 mana in order to win. With this wizard here, he needs to have one here, one here, 
one here and one here. You just look at this and it'll tell you. It's very, very easy to tell. Uh, the ingredients here are going to dictate what you need to, to uh, ha have in order to buy these specific spells here. So on your turn, you can go ahead and go start first by casting a spell. If it has a B on it and you have a wizard with a hat on top of one of the cards of the B, that means beginning of the turn. In the first turn, you're not going to have that, so you're going to skip it. You're then going to go ahead and roll dice and take that much mana. So in this case, you're going to get eight. You can get anywhere from two to 12 mana, and you always start with your five, so he's got quite a bit. Now he's going to go ahead and look at his secret formula. He knows that he needs to get to here, so he is going to go ahead and, he's yellow, he's going to go ahead and choose to buy any of these that he wants to buy. Well, he's already got his eyeball, and he's got his toad for this one here. He's got a mimic, which is the only wild in the game, and then he's got this ooze or or orc burger right there, which he needs. Anything you buy here is going to cost two, anything you buy here is going to cost one, so he's going to spend two, he's going to get that orc booger, and the one's going to replace it. If there's ever two of the same in this row here, they're going to get discarded here, here, and new ones are going to come out. He can choose to buy up to three cards and have a total of five cards in his hand, so maybe he'll spend one more just to take a greeting off the top of the deck. After that, he can go ahead and decide to buy any of the spells, provided he's able to. And the reason why I say able to is because in this area here, you can only buy four spells, and that's the ones the lines connect it to. Whenever you have a character on a card, it will signify in arrows uh, where you can go ahead and buy next. So for instance, I'm going to go be yellow here, and I'm going to go ahead and buy this one right here. Uh, that's going to cost me one eyeball, and it's going to cost me one froggy, or a slime of toad. Then I'm going to have to spend three, because I chose to, to learn the spell. After I've learned the spell, uh, I can then go ahead and buy another spell if I'd like, which I will do. I'm going to go ahead and take this one here, I think, with a Mimic for the Brain and the Orc Booger for the Booger. And when I go ahead and move to the next space, I don't actually move the same wizard. I will move another wizard from the board anywhere or from the middle of the table here and move it right there. And it has a connection, so that's fine. Not only that, though, but this is one of the spaces I need, so I'm set for the blue area, at least for now. But that could change. Then I can go ahead and choose to cast an End of Turn spell. Now I have this area here, he's got a hat. I could spend four if I want and make it until the next uh, turn. Uh, whenever somebody rolls a one, uh, that player, oh, sorry, when, until the start of your next turn, the result is one whenever a player would roll a die. You decide the tiebreakers without rolling. Nasty. That's really powerful. Then he would choose to be done because he does not, he's not able to kill Merlin. You need to have all of them in the four spaces and the 20 mana. So the next player is going to get to go. And once again, he's going to start off by rolling the die here. Uh, he's going to look at his cards. He's got 12. That gives him a boatload of mana here and he's going to be saying okay what do i want to do i'll look here uh he needs this space this space this space and this one so maybe he will start off with seeing what he has in store with the cards here none of these cards are really going to help him for these specific four spaces so he's going to have to try and look down here or up here and i don't think there's anything here he wants either so let's go ahead and just draw three from the deck one, two, and then three with four change. And let's go ahead and draw one, two, and three. Discarding a card, we'll get rid of this Griffin Feather because we have more than one. And does he have anything to do? Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't have any of the specific ingredients to get these guys. So he's going to choose to end his turn. The next player is going to get to do the same thing. And then Merlin is going to take his turn by drawing a card from the top of the deck. It'll tell you don't forget. And if that's the case, you leave it here so you don't forget. Uh, it says until Merlin takes his next turn, any wizard who casts a beginning of turn spell may cast an end of turn spell for two less mana. So when he comes around his turn again, then you put this here and you pick a new one out. And the player is just going to keep going around in circles, doing that until somebody gathers their wizards in the correct locations on the board and takes and has 20 mana at the end of their turn. Notice, though, that all of these spells here are randomly shuffled and face up on the board, and they all have different abilities and they have different costs, as well as beginning and end turn cycles when you can choose to utilize them. And always, always, whenever you want to move to a new location, so if I wanted to go to Tsunami and I have the bat and I have the brain and three mana, I can take one of these guys from here and place it there, or I could take one of, I could take this guy here and place it there. So you can never, you, you have to be, you have to place from different er areas. You can't simply move the unit that you would normally move. Oh, you normally want to move, I should say. And uh, the reason why you have five units is so that we're always going to have one that's able to roam around the board to get to the four spaces you need. And that is the basic gist of the game. Can you complete it before your opponents do? Is Merlin going to mess you up and torture you? Or are you going to be rolling a lot of ones and not getting as much mana as you need to succeed in the game? All right, let's come up and talk about what I think about the game Kill Merlin. So let's talk about a couple caveats for Kill Merlin before we get into my review. And the first thing is, remember, whenever you cast a spell, you need to take the hat off the wizard or flip 
with the token, depending on what the game is going to come with. I don't know this is the prototype, so I'm sure there will be certain changes to the product quality. But nevertheless, you cannot utilize a spell with a wizard that doesn't have a hat, because that means you've already utilized that specific wizard and cast their spell. Like I said though, Merlin can refresh those spells, and Merlin has quite a few abilities that do tons of different things, whether it be switching the order of play, moving around different characters, allowing you to take control of the game, switching the amount of mana people players have, and just all kinds of nuttiness, right? And of course, the fact that you just need to make sure that you when you, the, follow the movement rules as well as spending the three mana to get the spells. You have to, in order to not only uh, cast the spells, will it cost mana on the card, but it'll always cost three to learn the spells. You know, if you just have to move a different unit. Overall, though, that is the basics of the game, and it's a very simple game. So, what do I think about the game? Well, first of all, I like the artwork. It's fun. It's friendly. It's got this kind of like weird theme where you're like Merlin is kind of a bad guy. But he does kind of help you in some ways. It it, it it hits the theme just enough. It's not like super like on point to like killing Merlin. You're not really trying to do that. You're just gaining the spell to do so. And then when you have enough mana, you can cast it and he will he will be done. And then you say the phrase, and then I killed Merlin, you know, as smugly as you possibly can. Uh, the game is random. Like it, it, it is the essence of a random game. Uh, the fact that when you start the game off, you're going to have five mana and then you're going to roll these two die and it's one through six on both of them. One person can get literally two mana and one person can get 12 mana. That is, you can't take it seriously. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. With this game, it's a party game, it's a family game, and it's crazy. You're not always worried about rolling for two or rolling for 12 because players are gonna switch mana around based on what Merlin does, based on the cards on the board and the spells people utilize. So even when you think you're losing in this game, you might actually not be losing because Merlin might have a few tricks up his sleeve to help you or to hinder you depending on how well you're doing, I should say. And players always be moving different pieces around. It, it, oddly enough, it balances out but it is still random, right? The cards on from Merlin, you, I'm gonna just go ahead and pick a random one from the top here. Wizards must return all their mana tokens to the pool. Okay, so rather, regardless of how much you spent 12, or got 12 or two, it doesn't matter, right? Giving back the wizard with the most ingredient cards in hand discards half of them. So, it, like I said, it's, it's, you know, you can get two and be very dis dissatisfied with that result, but then Merlin might come back and be like, oh, because the player who rolled the most chose to save his mana, bam. Uh, I also noticed in a two player game, uh, it, the end of the game results very, very similarly each time I've played it where players are on the spaces they need to be on and they're simply rolling for the, the mana and making sure that the other players, uh, that the other player isn't going to try and utilize a spell that's going to mess them up. Uh, for instance, uh, when my friend was going to win when we started the two-player variant of the game, I ended up taking control of his turn, utilizing his wizard to make him move one of his wizards away from the space he needed to move to. But it didn't matter because Merlin still ended up helping out him out enough to where I started losing all my mana and he was able to come back and he did in fact win the game even though so we were both at the end there and I managed to completely mess with him. So it's just craziness, right? And with spells and sorcery, I feel like that can be um, a good theme to the style of game, but it's definitely going to be a niche market. It's going to be for families. It's going to be for kids and anybody who's not like super strategically minded. Now there is strategy to the game by where you want to move and how you want to place the units and when you want to spend the spells and uh, how you utilize the mana that you do have. However, that can all be trumped based on other players utilizing spells to stop you, and of course, the Merlin deck, which completely changes the game every single time one of these guys pops out, especially even the change in the order of play can mess the game around. The more players, the better. In a two-player game, I found it to be okay, but with three and then four players, the craziness was just phenomenal, and if you like crazy, then that's where it amps up to 11, right? And, uh all the nuttiness starts happening and it's pretty fun like sometimes i was just like oh i'm losing so badly and oh he's doing so well and then i'm like oh i just i got so good I got, I got everything there's no way he can beat me i'm gonna win on the next turn no i'll win on the next turn no dang it craziness so there can be some frustrations as well overall it's a fun game but like i said it's got a lot of chance and a lot of randomness and a lot of take that aspects as well due to the spell so it's you're gonna know if this is gonna, gonna game for you and your family if you're strategically minded like super like if you like scythe and that kind of thing maybe you want to pass this one up but if you like crazy family games this is the one you definitely want to check out kill merlin go ahead and take a look at it in the description below if it sounds like something they'd be interested in uh, your gaming group all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment as well as taking a look at 
kill Merlin. Currently on Kickstarter in the description below. If that sounds like something interesting, you should definitely take a look at it. Don't forget to check out our website, unfiltergame.com, so the blog posts, giveaways, all that stuff, as well as uh, the giveaway geek and everything boardgames.com. They get some great giveaways there, even more than our own site. Two new giveaways coming up today, Sabrosa from IDW and Nerdy Inventions from Mayday Games. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I look forward to... See you guys next time.